Okay, so what I thought I would do is like a little mini tutorial just to kind of give you a starter on where I begin with most of my designs. So first things first, drag and drop from the desktop our JPEG file. And we have pretty decent artwork to work with here, which is also a very nice thing. So the first thing I like to do is trim up my JPEG to only include the part that I'm going to actually rhinestone. So we just trim this up, grab our shape edit tool, and pull over the edges of our JPEG. So I have just the edge of my text and the edge of my baseball. And we know we want the design to be about 10 inches wide. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to be using this macro that I created for myself because I wasn't really happy with the available options uh, out there. Um, and so I kind of am going to cheat a little bit and use this um, but I'll show you how to do it in CorelDRAW as well if you uh, just want to do it manually in CorelDRAW. So first things first, let's pick a stone color here. We're going to go with light cyan, and we're going to pick a stone size for 10SS. Um, I usually cut them at uh, 3.1. You asked uh, for 0.4 millimeter spacing, so we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm going to start off by choosing add sample. And all that does is just add me a stone that is 3.1 millimeters. Um, to my document and I'm going to zoom in here tight and what I want to see here is how many stones I can fit in this space because we're going to be doing uh, light cyan as well as dark cyan stones to give this two color uh, bevel effect. So right now we could fit about two stones um, so obviously that's important to know that before we start our design. So now, now we know what we're going to be after, let's go ahead and begin and I'll show you. So first things first, we need to lock down this JPEG. Right click on it and choose lock object. And then we're going to zoom in nice and tight to the letter right here in the middle, the letter O in rocks. And we're going to come over here and grab our pen tool. So it's the, what is it, the one, two, five, the fifth uh, icon down, pen tool. Now, lots of ways to do things in CorelDRAW, but I'll show you how I learned to do things. Um, the other thing that you might consider is just download the demo if you've never worked with CorelDRAW. It really, uh, it's a nice program. But at any rate, um, we're just going to click and create straight lines. So right here at the point where these two different colors meet, click, and we're going to draw a straight line. Where it starts to turn, we click again. And where it ends that turn, we click again. And then finally over here we click one more time at the point. And that's all we have to do. I hit the space bar, that exits me out of that tool, back to the previous tool, which was my pick tool. So we're going to go to our shape tool here, which is the second icon down. And then I can modify these lines. So I'm going to select both of those nodes on those on that line and come up here and choose this button right here, convert to curve. So that changes my straight line segment to a curve segment. Let me just right click on this so we can see that a little bit better. Right click on a color, changes the path color. So now we're going to go ahead and pull this up and I can see you have a nice curve. Really simple to do. You're just going to pull it. You could pull this thing any which way and just pull it right back and it just kind of almost goes by itself. Now I'm very very anal when it comes to my artwork so I'll to finish this, I would grab those two notes again and convert them to smooth notes. And that just smooths that curve so smooth, um, it's perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back over to my pick tool and I have this newly created path selected. I'm going to left mouse click and drag and then right click on my mouse. That will create me a duplicate. Then up here in the options bar, I'm going to mirror horizontally and vertically and now you can see I have the one that goes down. So I'm going to pick it up by the node and drag it over to this node. That's really all there is to it. Now you can see how perfectly that just lands right where we need to, right? So the next thing we need to do is we need to combine these two lines together. So we just select both paths, come up here to the options bar, and combine. Now if that wasn't enough work, we still have a little bit more work to do and the two paths are combined but where they were combined right here at the two points those are not so that's our next step so we're going to grab our shape tool and grab that corner 
and come up here and choose join two notes and come down here and join two notes. Now, this next thing will make no sense to you, um, but because it is specific to this macro. These notes, there's four of them, besides the corners, these notes have to be smooth notes or something other than a cuffs note. And that's really beyond the scope of what I'm trying to convey to you. Um, so I'm going to just make that change real quick. So I'm just going to select those four notes and just make them something besides a cuffs note. Looks like they actually are smooth notes already, um, which is good because that's what we need. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use Corel Draw here. Let me go to my contour and we're going to contour to the outside by two. Remember, because we want two rows of stones. But what is our contour going to be? The way I figure it as a starting point, I figure the stone size, which in this case is 3.1, that's what I use, and the spacing, which is 0.4 of a millimeter. So that means my offset, or my contour, is going to be 3.1 plus 0.4, that's 3.5 millimeters. 3.5 mm override the default inch and number of steps 2. So I want to go 2 times 3.5 to the outside and hit apply. And you can see what we get. We get two more paths to the outside. I'm going to right click on that creation, break contour group apart, and then one more time right click and we have to uh, ungroup. So now each one of these paths are a separate entity. And then we need to do the exact same thing to the inside. So we're going to go to the inside by two. Again, we select that, break it apart, and also ungroup it. Now, I'm just going to stone, let's start with our original yellow line. Okay? So we have all of our stone parameters already set. And then we're just going to go ahead and choose Create Blend. And that will add the stones all the way around that particular uh, object. Then the next thing we're going to do is, and actually we need to back up a step now that I think about it. So let me just clear that blend. And this one. Because I, I may have a stake here because half of this we're going to do in light cyan and the other half we're going to do in dark. So we need to be able to differentiate between the two. So let me show you what this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to take each one of these things and we're going to make a selection right there and over here in my notes tab we have a break at notes. Now this won't mean much to you but let me just do this real quick. So at every corner of this path this one was already broken for us. But at every other one, we just select it, break it notes. Select it, break it notes. Come down here, do the exact same thing. Select it, break it notes. Click on this one. Wait till you get a dashed line. See, there's a dashed line. Now we can select that node and break it. And I'll show you what, what all that's doing uh, once I get them all done here. I'm actually going to change that in my macro so I can do it all in one step uh, rather than having to do each one individually because it kind of drives me batty. Um, and that's what you learn as you begin working with your rhinestone designs. You learn what tools we need uh, to make our lives simpler. All right. So the way almost every rhinestone program works out there, essentially what you're doing is creating a path and adding a circle object to that path. Now some programs don't actually show you the path. I think that's important for me to have. So I like to, to have that. But look at our path. Look, what is this? See, we have a half and then we have the other half, right? So, and that is for each outline. We have that. We have that half. So that allows us to do the outside one. So we're going to do this outside one. Now, this is something that's kind of important. Um, again, this is what I'm doing. I don't expect you to understand this, but there are three nodes that make up 
besides the, the two ends, there are three other nodes. We just want to make sure those are not cusp nodes, which they're not. Um, and so now what we'll do is we'll switch colors to dark cyan and choose add stones. And then we added stones there. And then we'll do the next line in. Same thing again. I just double check those nodes. They're not cusp nodes. And again, um, that's something I'm going to fix because that drives me nuts having to do that. Um, but we'll go ahead and, and choose the create blend again. Now, I made an executive decision um, that what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two rows of dark and I'm going to do three rows of light. Um, and the reason I chose three rows of light is because the light cyan on a shirt, on a dark colored shirt, are uh, much more brilliant than a dark cyan or cyan is. So we want the lighter, brighter uh, stones, I think. Um, and it, it will, you know, it actually turns out really nice when it's all said and done. So uh, again, I just double check those nodes every time. Make sure they're not cusp nodes, and they're not. So we'll go ahead and choose this create blend. And now we got light stones. And then we'll do the next line in. And we could do all these lines at once. In, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's just double check. I just want to show you that. Um, so these are cusp nodes that I just selected. So I need to change those to uh, smooth. And then we'll do the next line in. And we'll select all their, those nodes and make sure those are smooth. Okay. So now we can select two lines. Let's just zoom in tight here. We'll select both of these lines. And you can see we can add stones to both of them at the same time. So we don't have to do them one by one. All right, now, for this next line that we need to do, that line has to be dark. Again, we have to change the uh, nodes. And we'll go back to dark here and choose Create Blend. And that takes care of that one. And then we'll go to the next one. And again, I'll select all these nodes and change it to smooth. And then we can add a blend to that one as well. And then we're going to switch back to Light Cyan. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's switch back to Light Cyan. Create the blend there. And then this one will create the blend there. And then see that? I didn't convert that. And that kind of screwed up my stones there. It kind of drives me batty. Uh, so I'll go ahead and make that change. That right there should be a smooth node. And we'll select the other nodes that make up that line and make sure they're all smooth. And they are. The rest of them were, just that one wasn't. So we'll go ahead and uh, change that. And then one more here. Um, we'll go ahead and change that to smooth. And we will choose the uh, create blend for that one. There we go. All right. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to lift this off just so we could see this. So let's do that. Let's just lift that off. I'm just going to right click. And then what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a black background behind this so we can see this a little bit better. And I'm going to switch over to wireframe mode. And right now you can see all these paths, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to just select all those stones and choose break stones. That breaks them all into individual objects for us. Pretty nifty, right? And then the paths, we're just going to select one path. Come over here to our select option and choose mark selection. And then we are going to, by name, create a selection and all of our paths are selected. Paths are nice to have if we want to modify this later, but for right now, we'll just go ahead and delete it because we still have our original paths over here with the rest of our, our work. But let's just go ahead and look at the enhanced mode here. And that is essentially our stone design. So you can see um, it's very, very straightforward uh, to do uh, here inside CorelDRAW.